let's get down to business. Thanks for coming out tonight. I wrote me a manual, a step by step booklet for you to get. Oh, I make money moves. You can't see me, my time is now. What up, what up, what up, guys? Welcome back to the Fitness Times Business Podcast, the show created to provide you with the practical and strategic advice to help you level up in fitness, business, your career, your relationships, and your life. My name is Joseph Mansell. I am your host. Guys, first and foremost, let me just apologize for the big gaps in between podcasts at the moment. Uh, I run businesses, guys. I run companies, and uh, those companies are my priority. And uh, sometimes there's just a lot of shit going on that I need to attend to. And we've had uh, one of those periods over the last few months where there's just a lot going on. uh, And I have not had the opportunity as I would like to, to jump in here and record these podcasts for you. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Things are getting better. So we're going to get back on the schedule of, uh, of getting more frequent podcasts to you guys. So Those of you who uh, follow me personally on Instagram, perhaps you tune into my personal YouTube channel. If you guys don't, I suggest that you do. Uh, Just head over to YouTube, search for my name, Joseph Mansell, go to the channel uh, and subscribe to that channel. Uh, Those of you who have been following Pro Prep Season 2, my contest prep uh, video series, uh, you guys would know that I started prepping for a show that was supposed to happen on November 6, an Olympia qualifier, an All-Australian Men's Physique Pro Show in Melbourne. Uh, I started prepping for that show 20 weeks out. So at the start of June, uh, began my prep, got to the 11 week out point and the show was cancelled uh, because of border restrictions and, um, and travel restrictions and all of the shit that we're having to experience courtesy of the pandemic. And so I had a decision to make at that point because I was kind of halfway into this prep, you know, 10, 11 weeks into a 20 week prep, knowing that the show wasn't going to go ahead. And I had a decision to make. I was either going to continue with the prep to a certain point, or I was going to go, you know what, the, the, the end goal is, is, is gone. Um, the product, so to speak, is not there anymore. So I'm not going to commit to the process. And so the decision that I ended up making was I want to go for another six weeks. I want to prep for another six weeks. I want to get to uh, my, my end date really was the end of September, which would have been five weeks out from the show had it gone ahead. And the justification for doing that was I wanted to get my body fat levels down to a point where I could see where my physique was at. I could see how I developed in my previous off season and I could make a game plan uh, for my next off season, for my next growth season to continue to level up, to continue to get better as a men's physique pro athlete and, you know, eventually get myself that Olympia qualification. And I've been questioned over that final five to six week period, that period where I knew the show wasn't going ahead, but I continued to prep anyway, uh, through my DMs, person to person, uh, people, you know, have continuously been asking me, you know, why did, why did I make that decision? Why did I continue to, to, to go through with that prep, uh, knowing how difficult it is, knowing how many sacrifices I would need to sacrifice to continue to prep the hunger, the exhaustion, the, uh, fatigue, the mental fog and all the shit that goes along with, uh, getting yourself to a point where you're five weeks out from a show. And I've always also been asked, you know, knowing that the show wasn't going ahead, had I been prepping as hard as I normally would, had the show gone ahead? You know, was I sneaking little cheat meals here or there? Was I skipping my cardio? Was I not training as hard in my workouts? Because I knew that the the product wasn't, wasn't going to eventuate, you know, how hard did I commit to that process? And my answer to every single person who asked me either variation of that question was, when I make promises to myself, I keep them because I know the importance of keeping promises that I make to myself. And that's the inspiration for this episode, guys, is keeping the promises you make to yourself, why it's so important, why so many of us often break the promises we keep to ourselves, what happens when we break those promises that we make to ourselves, and then some practical and strategic advice if you're in the situation, and we've all been in the situation where we've made promises to ourselves that we've broken, how you flip the script and get back on track and make sure that you're starting to keep those promises that you make to yourself.
So why is it important to keep the promises you make to yourself? I think we all inherently know why, right? You say you're going to do something. What you do when nobody's watching dictates the amount of trust you build in yourself. It dictates the amount of confidence that you build in your abilities through taking action, through executing. And it builds resilience. It builds perseverance. It builds grit, especially when the shit gets difficult. I think we all fundamentally understand that. If you guys think about, you know, in the fitness realm, when you've followed a diet, when you've committed to a a diet, you've said, you know what, I'm making this promise to myself that I'm going to stick to my diet. And you stick to the diet. You don't cheat. You don't waver. It builds trust. It builds confidence and it builds resilience. In the business realm, you guys, you know, whether you own a business, whether you work for somebody else, you're an employee, you understand the importance of making a promise about executing a particular task or getting a particular something done and you get it done. It builds trust. It builds confidence in your abilities. It builds resilience, especially when you come up against things where you get pulled in a million different directions and it's really difficult to prioritize and execute, but you say, fuck it, you do it anyway. It builds resilience. It builds grit. It builds perseverance. And you just generally feel really fucking good about yourself. Maybe in your personal life, you know, those of you who implement a morning routine, uh, those of you who've been tuning into this podcast for quite some time, I hope that you guys have because I mentioned it on many, many occasions. But you know what that feels like. You implement a morning routine. Every single morning you execute. You build trust within yourself that you can prioritize and execute. You build confidence in your abilities through taking action. You build resilience. You build grit. You build perseverance, especially those mornings where you wake up and you feel tired or you you just feel like shit and you don't feel like executing your morning routine, but you say, fuck it and do it anyway. We understand this. We all understand the importance of keeping the promises that we make to ourselves. So it begs the question, why do we so often not keep the promises? Why do we so often break the promises that we make to ourselves? I think there's four main reasons why guys that that, that that I can kind of identify. I think the first one is there's not a lot of urgency around promises that you make to yourself. There's no real urgency of, you know, getting, the, getting shit done, keeping the promise or not keeping the promise. And to flow on from that, there's no immediate consequences either. You know, if you're, uh, you make a, a, a promise to yourself that you're not going to cheat on your diet, that you're going to follow a diet and you have a little cheat meal, there's no real immediate consequence of that. If you don't do that task that you promised yourself you were going to do, there's no immediate consequence. If you skip that morning routine one morning, there's no immediate consequence. So there's no urgency. There's no immediate consequence. And there's also no third party or social accountability. The promises that you make to yourself have a lot to do with what you do when nobody's watching. The fact that you're making these promises to yourself, not to somebody else, means that there is no third party accountability. The accountability is 100% on you. And we all know when nobody's watching, sometimes, you know, we act a little bit differently than when there's somebody watching over our shoulder who knows that we've made a certain promise, who knew that we said we were going to do something. You know, we're going to let them down as well as let ourselves down. So there's no third party or social accountability. And the fourth one, and I think this one is, uh, is probably the most important, is there's no real appreciation for the long-term consequences of breaking the promises that we make to ourselves and the habits and the momentum that that's creating. Which leads me to what happens when we break the promises to ourselves. And I think for, for most of us, this is, this is going to be, you know, it's going to come quite natural as well. We kind of know, right? The first thing is that trust that we build when we keep the promises. Well, you know what? We stop trusting ourselves. A great analogy I like to use is, you know, let's say you make, uh, you make a, an appointment with a friend. You know, you're trying to catch up with a friend or a family member or whatever it is. And you say, you know what? This day, this time, I'm going to meet you at this place. So you 
gets to that day, that time, that place, you're waiting there. The friend, the family member doesn't show up. 15 minutes later, you get a phone call, a message, whatever. They say, ah, oh, shit. You know, I had this happen. I completely forgot. Forgive me. I fucked up. It's my bad. Okay, cool. So you reschedule. Week later, same place, same time. Week later, you're waiting there. 20 minutes goes by. You get that phone call again. Fuck, I, I'm so sorry. I had this pop up. I had that pop up. I completely forgot, completely skipped my mind. Yeah, shit, man. That's twice now. I don't know if I can trust you a third time, but you do because they're a close friend. They're a family member. Reschedule three weeks time. Same place, same time. Three weeks later, you're waiting 30 minutes. You get the phone call. You get the message. That's it. You're done. I don't trust you anymore. I don't trust that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. Guys, the exact same thing happens internally when you don't keep promises that you make to yourself. You erode trust in yourself. You know what else you erode? You erode confidence in your own abilities. You erode self-belief and you incubate inadequacy and self-doubt. You go from somebody who goes, you know what? I can do whatever the fuck I put my mind to. I can do whatever I believe I can do. To somebody who goes, ah, oh, shit, I'm not sure if I can do this. I don't know if I've got the skills, the experience, the know-how to do this. So you go from someone who's building self-confidence to somebody who's incubating self-doubt. And perhaps the worst thing that breaking the promises you keep to yourself does, guys, is it builds a habit of breaking promises. You guys know you cheat on your diet once. How much easier is it to cheat again? How much easier is it to justify? You know what? Last time I cheated, uh, it wasn't really that bad. So I'm just going to do it again. You do it a second time, becomes easier to do it a third time, fourth time, fifth time. Next minute, you're not even fucking following your diet. You're just cheating every damn meal. In your business, your career, that day that perhaps you didn't sleep well, you got some shit going on in your personal life, you know, you're just not feeling up to it. You got this important task that you need to get done, but you're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to knock off early today. I don't feel like doing that task. You do that once. Super easy to do it the next day. It's super easy to do it the week after. It's super easy to do it on a weekly basis. You start building habits of not executing. You start building habits of breaking promises you keep to yourself. It applies to all areas of life. In your personal life, you skip that morning routine. On the morning you wake up, you're feeling tired. Maybe you didn't sleep too well. Maybe you just wake up and your mind's full of shit and it's just gone a million miles an hour and you just don't feel like executing your morning routine. You do that once, it's much easier to do it the next day and the day after that and the week after that and the month after that. And then suddenly this strong morning routine that you are executing on a daily basis, you ain't executing at all. So it builds a habit of breaking promises and it's super hard to break the momentum once you've built momentum of breaking promises that you keep to yourself. And perhaps the scariest thing that can come out of that momentum is you will start identifying with a person who doesn't say what they say they're going to do. You will start identifying as a person who doesn't follow through on what they say they're going to do. You will start identifying as a person who breaks promises they keep to themselves. And that's a big fucking problem because that's super hard to unattach your identity from that person and try and shift it in the other direction and, and try and attach your identity to somebody who does follow through on what they say they're going to do. So how do you start, you know, let's say that, you know, you, you've gone through a, a period of your life where 
you know, perhaps you did used to keep promises you made to yourself. Perhaps you used to follow through. Perhaps you used to execute when you didn't feel like executing. Perhaps you said, fuck it. I don't care what happens. I made a promise. I'm going to keep that promise no matter what. And then something's happened in your life. Perhaps you've gone through some heavy shit, whatever it may be. And now you're identifying as a person who doesn't follow through. Now you're identifying as a person who breaks the promises they keep to themselves. Guys, I've got six steps that I think will help you out a lot. This is the part where you really want to take some serious mental notes or even some, some written notes if you want. I think the first step is to identify why you've broken the promises you've made to yourself in the past. Take inventory. Really put yourself in a little bit of a vulnerable position and go, you know what? I said I was going to do that. I didn't do that. Why did I not do that? I said I was going to follow that diet. I didn't follow the diet. Why did I not do it? I said I was going to complete that important task at work. I didn't get it completed by the deadline. Why didn't I get it completed by the deadline? Really take inventory and really take a deep dive into why you didn't keep the promises. Perhaps they were too ambitious. Perhaps the promises were just too difficult. Perhaps it was a lack of effort and you're able to identify it was a lack of effort. Perhaps you were just going through some heavy shit in one area of your life that you just needed to not put pressure on yourself in other areas so that you had the mental and the emotional capacity to deal with that heavy shit you had to deal with. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Just take inventory of it because that's going to allow you to accept responsibility and with great responsibility comes great power. You can now affect change. So how do you affect change? Let's go step two. I think you got to start small. I think you got to start with little promises that you know are going to be a little stretch. You know, it's not just automatic. It's not, it's not habits and routines that you're going to do anyway. It's going to be a little stretch, but with a little bit of effort, with a little bit of focus consciousness, you know that these are promises that you can keep. They're not huge. They're not crazy ambitious. They're not going to take a lot of perseverance, a lot of resilience, a lot of grit, just a little bit. Start small with the promises. And your fitness, you know, perhaps you, you made the promise you were going to stick to a diet and, and you didn't follow through. Maybe the, the, the beginning promise is just to track all of your meals for a whole week. You know what? I'm not actually going to follow a diet because perhaps that's a little bit too ambitious for me right now but I'm going to use my fitness pal or calorie king or whatever it is. I'm going to track everything that I consume for the whole week. Easy. It's going to take a bit of effort. Yeah, sure. It's not going to happen automatically. No, it's not. But it's a promise you can keep with a little bit of effort, with a little bit of focus consciousness. Perhaps in the business realm, instead of setting yourself these massive projects, these monstrous tasks, maybe just go, you know what? I'm going to set myself two or three tasks per day. They're going to be a little bit of a stretch. I know I can get them done if I actually focus and apply myself. That's the promise I'm going to keep. Perhaps in your personal life, if a, if a fully fledged morning routine is just too much of a stretch for you, maybe just pick one thing. Go, you know what? Every morning, I'm going to write down five affirmations. Every morning, I'm going to write down five things I'm grateful for. Perhaps I'm just going to read 10 pages of a, a self-development book per day. Just start small. Start with those little promises that you know, with a little bit of effort, you can keep. Step three, write your promises down and display them visibly. This really deals with the lack of third-party accountability around the promises you make to yourself, which flows into what you do when nobody's watching. But this is a way of keeping yourself accountable. I think so many of us so often make these promises to ourselves, but we don't verbalize them and we definitely don't write them down. They just sit in our, in our mind, which really makes it difficult to hold ourselves accountable to it because your mind starts changing and perhaps you go, you know what, maybe I didn't, maybe that prom maybe I never made that promise. If you write it down, 
It's there in writing. If you put it somewhere visibly where you can see, perhaps, you know, if you have a desk job, you work at a computer, get a little post-it note, put it on your computer, you know, whatever you, wherever you work, wherever you spend most of your time during the day, write it down, put it somewhere visibly where you can see it during the day. What I do guys is I have uh, my notebook. I have a notebook that I carry with me everywhere. And every single day I have what I call my top five. I have three tasks that I have to get done. One, two, three. I have something that I'm going to do that's going to make me uncomfortable, push me outside my comfort zone. And I have something I'm going to do that's going to demonstrate kindness or empathy. I write them down at the start of the day. They're there. I look at them during the day. They're in my face. I can't avoid them. And they help keep me accountable to those five promises that I make to myself. So write your promises down, display them visibly somewhere you can see them during the day. Step four is to prioritize, schedule, and then execute. It kind of goes without saying, but I think it's a skip that it's a step that a, a lot of us skip. Once you know what the promises are, once you've written the promises down, you know that you have the capacity to get them done. They're not just going to happen by themselves. You have to prioritize. You have to schedule them into your day. You have to exclude shit that's going to come at you during the day. That's going to take away that focus and that prioritization. And you have to execute. Prioritize, schedule, execute. Step five is to celebrate. Celebrate those small wins. You know, there's so much to be said about the, the chemical reactions in our brain where we actually give ourselves a pat on the back, where we say, you know what, I made those promises. For so long, I've been a person who doesn't keep the promises I make to myself. I just fucking kept those promises. I crushed those promises. I feel really good about myself. I'm going to celebrate this shit. And it doesn't need to be, you know, go out and have a big celebratory meal or, you know, go and uh, treat yourself to a glass of wine or a beer or whatever the fuck. It can literally be just a little psychological, you know what, I fucking killed it today. And I'm proud of myself. You know what I do in my notebook, guys, in my top five. So I've got the day, Monday, one, two, three, uncomfortable kind. Tuesday, one, two, three, uncomfortable kind every single day of the week. When I cross those five things off, I put a little W and I circle it. That means I won the day. That's my little psychological pat on the back. That makes me feel really fucking good when I can put a W on that day because I kept the promises I made to myself. So step five is celebrate your small wins. And then step six is to stack your promises. You guys have heard me talk about habit stacking in previous episodes of this show. This is a form of, of habit stacking is once you get to a certain point where the promises that you're making are super easy to keep and they become habits, they become habitual, they become routine, push yourself a little bit further. Now go from making those small promises to medium-sized promises and then repeat. Write them down, prioritize schedule and execute, celebrate, and then crank them up again. Start stacking these small wins with medium wins, stack the medium wins with large wins. Before you guys know it, you're building this habit of winning every fucking day. You're building this habit of keeping the promises you make to yourself. You're going to start identifying as a person who does what they say the fuck they're going to do. And that's where we're trying to get to. I want to tell you guys a little... Um, story about myself uh, and this kind of ties into this habit stacking uh, and you know how to make the most of the the momentum of let's call it promise stacking actually in this in this um, in this realm it's stacking promises on top of each other to build that momentum and, and start building that identity of somebody who keeps promises they make to themselves so up until probably 2018 um, I was really good at promise stacking. I was really good at making the most of the momentum of uh, keeping promises I make to myself and just really just prioritizing, executing and fucking getting shit done. And then in 2018 and, and through into 2019, um, you know, I've been quite open 
about this with you guys as I went through some really difficult shit in my personal life. Went through a marriage breakdown, led to a divorce, financial settlement, all sorts of shit. The, the sort of stuff that I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy, to be honest with you guys. And up until that point, I never actually considered having a conversation with the voice in the back of my head that would negotiate me backwards on the promises I kept to myself. And what I mean by that is you guys know that voice in your head where you've got that important task to do and you know that you've made the promise and you want to keep the promise. And then the voice in the back of your head, you goes, you know what, man, you're going through some pretty heavy shit at the moment. Just do it tomorrow. Cut yourself some slack. It's all good. Just, you know, what? do it next week. It's fine. It's no urgency. It's no consequences. You'll be, be all good. That voice in the back of your head when you're trying to follow a diet and you've been good for a couple of weeks. You know you're not where you need to be, but you've been compliant for the last couple of weeks. You, you haven't cheated on your diet. And that voice in the back of your head goes, you know what? You deserve a cheat meal. You deserve to go off plan. You deserve to go off diet. You deserve this shit, that little voice. And you listen to that voice and you cheat on your diet and you break the promise you kept to yourself. For me, really, that period of my life, 2018 leading into 2019, um, when I did have a lot of traumatic stuff happening in my personal life was the first time that I started listening to that voice. I started negotiating with that voice. I started compromising because that voice became so loud in my head that I just, I, I, I couldn't not listen to it. And the lesson that I took out of that guys, you know, the, no surprises is that when I stopped keeping the promises I made to myself, all other areas of my life started crumbling as well. You know, it, it, it started in my personal life and then it moved into my professional career. It moved into my physical being. It moved into what I do with competing in the physical realm of my life, you know, and it kind of just spread like a virus into all areas of my life because I had that first negotiation with that voice in my head. I had that first compromise with that voice in my head. I started listening to that voice in my head for the first time. And when you start listening to that voice, that voice is very fucking persuasive. That voice is very good at negotiating. That voice is very good at getting you to do what it wants. So the one piece of advice that I can give you guys, the one major lesson that I took out of that period of my life, and you know, I hope that I never have to apply it again in the future because I hope I never have to go through shit that's that traumatic again. But if I do, I'll be much better equipped to deal with it. My one piece of advice for you guys is do not negotiate with that voice in your head. Make a promise to yourself that you will not listen to that voice in your head. It can scream, it can shout, it can say whatever the fuck it wants to say. You know, it can do its best negotiating with you. You will not listen to it. You will not compromise your own identity as somebody who keeps the promises they make to themselves because this voice in the back of your head is telling you that you deserve to not keep that promise you made to yourself, that you can do it tomorrow, or it's not gonna be that big a deal, or whatever the fuck that voice comes up with, you will not negotiate with it. Make that promise to yourself and keep it. And one final thing I wanna leave you guys with, you know, I've spoken about my thoughts on motivation many times in the show. Uh, and in particular, the fact that I think motivation is fake. It ebbs, it flows, it comes, it goes. You have periods of high motivation. You have periods of low motivation. Nobody is fully motivated all the time. Nobody lacks motivation all the time. Motivation 
is not going to help you keep the promises you make to yourself. I can guarantee you guys that. It may for a short period of time, but it's going to drop off. What is going to help you are the habits, the routines, the momentum that you build around stacking these promises, around stacking these small wins and building them into bigger promises and building them into bigger wins. Because what those habits and routines do is they drive action, they drive positive action. And what taking positive action does is it drives positive motivation. If you think of like a circle of, you know, motivation, action, habits and routines, action, motivation, the circle starts at the habits and the routines that you build. They drive the action, the action drives the motivation, the motivation drives further habits and routines, which drives further action, which drives further motivation. But it has to start with the habits and the routines. And keeping the promises that you make to yourself is one of the best ways to build those habits and routines, stacking those promises, stacking those wins, celebrating those wins, patting yourself on the back psychologically is one of the best fucking ways to build those habits and routines. So if you're the sort of person who struggles with low levels of motivation quite often, or if you've just come to the realization like I have that motivation is fake and it's going to ebb and flow and you're trying to figure out, you know, how the fuck do I get through when I'm motivated? I can do anything. I feel like Superman, Superwoman, the world is my oyster. I can fucking kill. But when my motivation level is not there, how do I, you know, how do I get through that? I'm telling you guys the best way to get through it is to make promises to yourself and to keep them. And just to tie back into the original inspiration for this episode, you know, the last five, six weeks of, of the prep, for me, my motivation levels were fucking through the, the complete floor. Like they couldn't get any lower. That last couple of weeks, let me tell you guys, always tired, always hungry, always feeling physically sore because my calories were so low brain fog to the point where I just couldn't fucking concentrate for more than like 15 minutes without losing my, my whatever I'm trying to focus on the realization that the show was canceled again, which for me is the second time a show has been canceled. My motivation levels were absolutely non-existent and what pushed me through, or should I say rather what pulled me through the last five to six weeks of this prep and allowed me to keep that promise I made to myself was the fact that I identify as a person who does what the fuck I say I'm going to do. I identify as a person who makes a promise to myself and I keep that fucking promise. No matter what the universe throws at me, no matter what sort of day I'm having, no matter what the fuck, it doesn't matter. I'm keeping that promise. And I want you guys to get to that point as well. I want that for you guys as well. I want to see you fucking win. I want to see you identify as a person who keeps the promises they make to themselves. I want to see you identify as a person who does what they say they're going to do. No matter what, it doesn't fucking matter. Thank you guys for tuning in. You know, the one thing that I ask in return, if you have enjoyed this episode, if you take a value out of this episode, if you've got some practical and strategic advice that you can go and apply to your life uh, immediately, which I'm hoping you guys have, the one thing I ask in return is that you share the show. Uh, please take a screenshot right now of whatever podcasting platform you're listening to, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Podbean, Stitcher, it doesn't matter. Uh, post it in your Instagram story tag me in that post at Joseph Menzel. I try and share as many of those as I possibly can and just tell people about the show guys. Next time, you know, you're talking about podcasts, you're talking about what you've been watching on Netflix or Disney plus or whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, drop a little, uh, a little plug for the fitness times business podcast in there. We're trying to reach as many people as possible, trying to provide the practical and strategic advice to help as many people as possible level up in all areas of their life. And I hope I've been able to do that for you guys today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. Until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side. 
Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Fitness Times Business Podcast. We hope you enjoyed listening. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform. And if you enjoyed this episode and took some value from it, make sure you share it with your friends, your family, and your followers. And if you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a five-star rating.